today I'm going to cover making a Kobo Mini uh, to run LK8000 or XC saw with a QTEC uh, L80 GPS chip. So these are some of the things that you need. Obviously you need um, Kobo. Um, this is a, a new second hand one. We've just taken the uh, cover off the back which is uh, quite simple. Just take the screws out the back of it. Uh, I'm going to remove this battery. This battery is held in with, um, it's, it's just stuck in with a bit of double sided tape. To get it out, the easiest way to get it out is to um, just lever it with something, start levering it with something like a credit card, uh, a small plastic card under one corner. And then what I use is a piece of uh, thin nylon, which you can get uh, well you might have some lying around for any strong cord really and I thread it underneath the corner um, of the battery it's a bit hard to do with one hand and basically just work that backwards and forwards <clears throat> until you have levered the battery off um, what we're going to do later is I'm going to take this battery out completely I'm going to individually cut these wires to leave that contact in place and replace it with uh, with a bigger battery um, these are about well between six and eight pounds depending where you're buying from from china um, that will go in the back there this is actually the largest one i've not really tried on this side usually i buy four four thousand five thousand milliamp hours this is actually five and a half thousand milliamp hours because it worked out as a slightly cheaper and um, it should fit um, to be able to put that into the Kobo, what you need is a, is a spacer. Um, this is a, a four mil 3D printed spacer. One that I made on a, on a previous video. Uh, I basically just used a piece of uh, four, four millimeter perspex and cut it to size. So you can, you can do it either method. If you know somebody that's got a printer, then um, doing this method is, is easier because this fits quite neatly into the back of the Kobo um, fits on like that so basically it's uh, it's increasing the size of it by four millimeters and the battery then will will fit in here somewhere um, and you can still get the you can still then get the cover onto the back of it okay so that's what we're going to be using and then to mount the to mount the GPS chip on the front, again, um, you get a 3D printed cover. Um, there's one here, which is going to fit just that single chip. Um, obviously, they need to uh, drill a couple of uh, holes there to, uh, to put some bolts through to the other side. Um, obviously, making sure that it misses uh, misses things on this side. So this, and then the other thing that you uh, can use which is uh, which is optional but uh, quite a good idea is to uh, get some two millimeter perspex um, it's fairly cheap off, off eBay and uh, and to cut a piece of that uh, together with uh, a little piece of uh, double sided velcro and, um, and some duct tape you can make a cover for the front of it so that um, it basically the screen doesn't get broken when you're flying and if you want to uh, do this then you can obviously you can change <coughs> any information on the screen by using the uh, by using the screen and then that covers closed again it's protected this is a bigger cover on here and actually a bigger chip this is an l86 chip just slightly bigger and that space uh, and that 3d uh, printed cover there will actually fit a blue fly if you want to put a vario unit on rather than just a simple gps chip now the other things that you need are um soldering iron um it's fairly cheap if you've not got one i mean this one was about 16 16 pounds off ebay and it's got various um sizes of bits it's also got a temperature control on it um when i'm soldering i use a, a very fine uh, point because you don't need uh, you don't need that much heat some solder um, some wire cutters uh, wire strippers 
uh, which uh, if you uh, if you want to use them, that's actually a flux pen, which is sometimes good if you uh, if you want to make the contacts on the back of the uh, the Kobo. Sometimes these serial contacts have oxid oxidized a little bit, so either clean them up with um, with a small blade or a small screwdriver, or you know, use that pen to get a, a better um, solid joint. Um, so that's basically what you need. So that's the <clears throat> that's the two holes drill for the cover. Um, I'm not quite sure if you can see that, but that that hole there actually where it lines up. There's um, a metal tab just underneath it on the other side here. Um, so to get the nut underneath there, well the other thing I've just done is I've just used a, a small Stanley knife blade just to remove that fin that was positioned there so that the nut will slide underneath so you just have to look at that um, so the only other thing to do with the cover is to now drill <coughs> a small hole uh, round about here somewhere to make the connection onto the serial board you always got to make sure you don't touch any of this glass of the screen because if you do that you'll break the screen um, but basically that where the the GPS chip fits underneath the cover here <clears throat> that hole will be here somewhere for the wires to come through and uh, come through the board onto the other side so I'm just going to mark that and drill that now be okay uh, one more hole that uh, they that can drill is a hole for uh, for a lanyard so I'll just work out a position for that and drill another hole here somewhere Uh, when you've I've drilled that hole in that sector there, once you've drilled that hole, it's a good idea to uh, put this cover back on this side um, and then mark those holes, mark that hole all the way through basically to uh, so that you can put land yard straight through. So I'll give this a go. Hopefully that will line up a little bit close to the edge there, but uh, should be okay. Okay. <clears throat> so the next thing we need to do is we need to put some wires on this uh, GPS chip. Um, so you need to check the pinout connections. Uh, you can find them on the uh, there's an RS data sheet, both for the L86, which is a slightly bigger one, and uh, and this L80. They're both the same. Um, so this is a diagram I did before. You'll see that there's um, 
on the back of the the back view of bottom view of the chip basically there's a there's a small arrow here which marks pin number one so that's pin number one then two three four and five and six the top one two three four five six so uh, pin number two is the TX line from this chip which is the transmit line that's got to go to the RX on the serial port on the Kobo three is the ground and four is the supply which is VCC now on this particular chip <clears throat> you need to either put power onto pin pin five which is V backup and VCC um, the re backup is so that the chip starts up quicker so the, the, you can do that from your Kobo but it's not really worth putting that uh, putting that fourth wire on so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bridge these two pins so that there's a supply onto V backup once the uh, chip is powered up by switching it on so I need to uh, prepare three pieces of wire and, uh, and make these connections um, and then basically those will route off the back of this chip and through the hole that I've drilled in the back of the Kobo board so that's what we're going to do next okay so you get silver and iron hot it's on um, probably on about just over halfway on this I don't know what temperature is but it's a uh, medium really um, <clears throat> make sure the end of the tip is clean um, just use your wire strippers just to uh, prepare the end of the wires and then what you want to do is uh, is just tin these wires a little bit this cable I'm using is actually um, multi-core cable from uh, burger alarm so usually it's uh, you get six or eight colors in it uh, just any thin stranded wires uh, fine really <clears throat> so I'm just tinning these okay um, the next thing I want to do is to uh, put these wires on here it's awkward with soldering this I'm trying to record it so I'm going to use this uh, yellow wire for the, uh, the TX one. So I'm just uh, having a look at how that might fit. So it doesn't need to be quite as long as that. I'll just, uh, I'll just trim the end of it off a little bit. That should do. Um, you can either hold this on and solder it. Um, I like to uh, use this little helping hand which was about I don't know, four pounds or something off eBay and it's uh, quite useful so you can use this to uh, position the wire so the TX line going on to uh, pin 2 uh, make sure that that's in position Somewhere there, and then just uh, make that contact. have a look at that that should be okay uh, I don't want it sticking out of the top so I'll just uh, cut off that little bit of solder there and that looks as though that should be fine that's uh, just make sure you've got a reasonable joint and then uh, and then basically do the others
On this last one, uh, the other thing that you need to do, you see you need to bridge, bridge it across uh, between four and five. So I just cut a little piece of wire here, a bit fiddly. Do this different ways really. Uh, I'm just going to use that to just um, try and make that contact on there. Whoops, <laughs> it's running away. Let's put a little bit of solder on there first. Okay, that's just uh, popped up a little bit high that one, so I just need to um, push it down a bit. Okay, so it's a good idea at this stage as well just to make sure that um, you can buzz these out really to the end of these wires and make sure that you've got a good connection. So you can do that with, uh, you can do it with a multimeter if you're unsure. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little piece of uh, double sided tape on the top of this chip just to. Uh, Hold it a little bit more secure. And the other thing that I'm going to do is just um, put a bit of duct tape over those contacts just to hold them a bit more secure. Okay. So, take these wires and thread them through that hole. bolt this back up now we've got the um, cover on DPS chips wired up with three wires to connect on this side um, the green wire here I've used was connected to um, ground or the earth on here so it's got pin 3 um, there is a ground connection there on the serial board but because <coughs> there's a lot of copper on the other side of the board it's very hard to make that connection it takes a lot of heat from the soldering iron 
So the easiest way to do it is to undo this screw a little bit here and put that wire underneath that screw um, and you'll get a, you'll get a nice connection. Do it that way. So you can see that's the that's the ground or that's the earth of the uh, of the board. So what you want to do is to give yourself a reasonable amount of wire um, and uh, strip it back. To uh, pre bend it around something like that. Get the screw so again. Just uh, make sure your soldering iron's clean, um, and just very slightly pin these away. It's a bit hot that soldering iron now. As I said, <coughs> these connections on here can be oxidised a little bit, so maybe you try and clean up a little bit. Use a little drill bit actually. You can either make these connections just flat across the board, but I like to, if I can, I like to just poke the end in and then like flat like that. Um, another suggestion is sometimes it can help if you use uh, a little bit of tape. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not easy for me to solder at this angle and um, do this. But uh, literally, it doesn't need very much heat to get soldered in place. Just pin the wire. That should be enough. Okay, let's have a look at that. VCC and V goes to there, that's TX goes to the RX and the earth connection I've made there. Now I've already put a, a card in this that's loaded with the, with the software I've copied. So you can either do that directly on the code bar or copy a working card from someone else. So the battery is still connected and they're a small battery so Hopefully, and try this for the first time. Hopefully, this is going to work. So we'll see. Mm. So this is dual boot, um, LK and uh, XC saw. I'm going to fire it up in LK. Fly. Loading the airspace file. So now it's a question of uh, of leaving that to find. Uh, it's inside at the moment. It can take uh, five minutes, but 
but uh, it's outside in clear space, it should be quick. And if you used it recently, it seems to fire up quicker as well. Um, I just went to have a look at some of the video editing I was doing. So that's uh, that's found a signal, it's always good. Uh, let's say at the moment we've just got the normal battery in it. Um, so you can see, oh, there we live. So look at that. I'm in airspace or East Midlands Airport. Oh well, can't fly back home really. Um, so you can see that's working. As I say, you can. If you go back to, uh, it's on LK, okay. um, you can see now that uh, the chip is uh, is transmitting. So everything's good. Um, got a good working unit. All we need to do now is to uh, swap the battery over and finish off putting it back together. So fitting the battery. Um, to do is uh, I just so what you need to do with this is it's uh, some people try to prise off this uh, connector and reconnect it no point really because you can easily break this um, and it's easier to uh, use the connector to make the connections so even if you want to use this battery again if you leave a little bit for something else if you leave a little bit of wire so you can extend these at a future date then uh, and that will work fine uh, having said that I've got a number of these batteries now so what you need to do is you need to cut these wires not together otherwise you short the battery out so um, so one at a time so I will uh, I'll cut it there say and uh, there so that battery is disconnected now um, and then what we need to do is we need to join these wires together um, so I need to carefully uh, strip these and then uh, I also like to use uh, a little bit of heat shrink over those uh, over those joints so um, I'll do that as well uh, find uh, some small diameter heat shrink to be careful not to uh, to short out this battery when you're uh, making these connections so um, a little bit of heat shrink If you haven't got a heat shrink, you can use some some tape. But um, this is obviously uh, better if you have.
So before um, before you uh, warm up that heat shrink, just make sure that uh, it powers up and, uh, and it works okay. And then you can go ahead and uh, and power up that heat shrink. And sorry, and uh, warm up the heat shrink. Um, the other thing I do is I like to make a piece of cardboard the same size as the original battery, and I use that with some double-sided tape to locate this battery so that's what it looks like now with the uh, battery in place um, all we need to do now is to put the spacer on which uh, <coughs> fits nicely back cover on which should clip into place <coughs> and then these screws uh, 1.6 by um, 8 millimeter long uh, which is the longest screw. and once all these screws are uh, long screws are back in place just uh, make sure that they're uh, tight <coughs> so all the screws are back in uh, push this cover back on so that's it, it's pretty much uh, finished now. So you can see that's uh, starting up again. Um, that's what the case looks like. Uh, quite nice fit with the spacer. Um, <clears throat> so all I really need to do with this now is to uh, make a cover for the front, which I'll, uh, which I'll make another day uh, and put the put the lanyard back in and that's it really um, fairly easy to make so have a go see how, see how you get on quite easy really <laughs> 